Oh, I know you guys hate the jogging and vlogging format. So today I am walking. Technical reasons involves a company which starts with a P, but sounds like an F. And a second shot that I got that has rendered me totally and completely thirsty at all times of the day for over a week. That all said, I want to talk to you about Mighty Ducks Game Changers. So let's start with the franchise as a whole. First, Mighty Ducks, what was that, 1992, starring Emilio Estevez? This is a rather PG-13 Disney film. Um, in the sense that you have this guy pulled over for drinking and driving, kind of forced into community service, coaching a Little League hockey they call them District 5. He ends up calling them the Ducks. At no point are they the Mighty Ducks in the first movie, but that is the title that they end up coming to. In fact, they're Ducks because every team in that league has a bird name. But uh, I thought this was a movie that was endeared to people. I thought maybe uh, the millennial reviewers over on Rotten Tomatoes would post-mortem increase that tomato score. My boy, was I wrong. Across the board, the franchise, it's like 20% or lower on Rotten Tomatoes. Now, look, this wasn't the biggest thing in the world. It didn't make Aladdin money, but shit, I thought the Mighty Ducks was popular. I, I must have been terribly mistaken. This first movie, it's it's like PG, little uh, Bad News Bears. Okay, it's... The first movie is like PG, Bad News Bears... The kids get into like a Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue carton. And it's like that should have been Playboy because their reaction doesn't make sense. There is pushing and shoving around. Uh, so you have these kind of things going, but the movie overall looks a bit dated. A lot of that is remedied with D2, The Mighty Ducks, the 1994 sequel, where our team of lovable losers have now made it to the Junior Goodwill Games, representing Team USA. They also acquire some new players with special skills. You got extra bashing power. You got Keenan Thompson adding the knuckle puck, which may as well be Fulton's first uh, big slam move, but now it spins funny. And it's better directed. It looks sharper. It's a more of a quality production about it but it gets too zany now you got this kid who has to, i'm coming for you connie i'm coming Connie. it pulls out a lasso ropes a kid during the middle of the match you got the over-the-top villain kind of again these are cartoons they're they're just one-sided scenery chewing villains in this and I'm not so sure that really ages well. We kind of want more nuance in our, our baddies, don't we? Then we get to D3, The Mighty Ducks. I didn't actually see this one growing up. Watched it on Disney Plus the other day as I kind of binged the series of, of which. This one has some problems because you kind of want Emilio Estevez coaching, but he shows up in, the, in a mentor role. He's a lawyer. Uh, he's, he's sort of feeling the... Jan Han what what was it the, you actually had two different old guys kind of trading places of who was going to be the old mentor in one and two and then the first guy's back for three but then he dies and Emilia just basically takes on that role the mighty ducks have gotten in this prep call uh, prep school and they're the junior varsity team which you think their team USA they would be starting but they have a tiff with the the high schoolers there and it's interesting you got michael cudlitz high school hockey player in this movie a year later he's going to his 10th year high school reunion in gross point blank wow predictable enough i mean the mighty ducks always seem to win at the end right it's not quite rocky it doesn't quite have the drama it's also, it's not particularly funny, but it's okay to throw on for some kids, one would think. Then they had a Mighty Ducks cartoon show. Uh, this is quite ridiculous in all the, the vein of the mid-90s cartoons. Disney really wasn't doing too bad on cartoons. Uh, you look at uh, 
DuckTales. I like Chippendale Rescue Rangers. And then Gargoyles, probably the high point for anything like a drama cartoon in the 90s. Uh, this side of Batman the Animated Series. The Mighty Ducks, though, or as I think it was just called here, Mighty Ducks. Anthropomorphic ducks from Puck World. They're obsessed with hockey. They, they just try to shoehorn in everything and make it very specific to that. I only watched the first episode of this back in the day. I watched the first episode again. You do maybe recognize some of the voices here. Main guy, what was his name? Like Darkwing. It wasn't Darkwing Duck, but that's uh, Ian Ziering. You know, Mr. Chainsaw from the Sharknados. And also, you got Raymond's older brother voicing the big. Uh, it, it's as mid-90s of a cartoon as one can get. Fast forward to Mighty Ducks Game Changers. This is a new series from Disney+. Plus. I appreciate that's a continuation of the Mighty Ducks. I feel like that in a way they're aping the dynamic of Cobra Kai. Hey, you guys remember Karate Kid? Well, here's the other side of the story. Turns out Johnny Lawrence thought that Ralph Macchio was the bad guy, right? He thought Daniel LaRusso came in, put the moves on his girl, and was being aggressive. Well, you don't really have another side of the coin here. You have, let's catch up with some of the kids. They're adults now. Do they have kids on the Ducks team? No, instead you have Laura Graham who's there because executives running this like the Gilmore Girls. Now, I appreciate that you actually have the creator of the original franchise. What's his name? Steve Brill. He wrote a lot of this. And this was his plan for it. Unfortunately, uh, lockdowns kind of had an effect on who could return, so they had a just recent kind of uh, reunion episode. But the problem here is you wanted to have these people kind of go in and out of the series over the course of the season and say you just had to jam them all together because you had like a two week lockdown it took like a month to shoot stuff and they couldn't really spend that time away so you had some limitations there but you know what this is a pretty enjoyable show though it's much more skewed pg than cobra kai and certainly the original mighty ducks these kids aren't shoving each other the closest thing they can get to as far as rivals in school is you can't sit at my lunch table. But there is a certain nuance with today's kids that I think this kind of plays well. It's also quite funny. You got this uh, rotound kid who's more of a broadcaster than an uh, athlete. He's cool. I like the idea of having the mom coach. Unfortunately, they found an actress who can't skate. Emilio Estevez at least does some of his skating in the movies. And hell, he shows up to kind of be like uh, sort of the amalgamation of Han Solo and Luke Skywalker as found recent, where he's like fed up with this nonsense. I hate hockey, I, I, but I love it. it it's a, he's actually hilarious, this deadpan. Uh, oh, hey, so we won. I got to get stuff. Cool. You got a check for me? You know, like I'm actually really digging it. And it's not just like Emilio Estevez is kind of there. But he, he is, in a way, wanting to hand over the reins some degree. Tell you this, though, that reunion, why does Emilio Estevez look younger than the kids he originally coached? Jesus. I would recommend that you guys check out My Ducks Game Changers. I don't think the movies are amazing, but they're better than people will say. And they're certainly better than I think a lot of this stuff would be if made today. And hell, there's a lot of it can't even be done. A lot of kids get their bell rung. Oh, they just kind of walk it off. No medical staff comes by. Yeah, concussion protocol would have ruined this shit.